Today, we are going to be learning how to do a proper workflow between recording our videos in our camera, going to After Effects, Blender, coming back to After Effects, and then exporting for the color grading on DaVinci Resolve. So let's take a look at the three main stages that we have in this pipeline. So the first one is recording, Second one is the VFX R2D workflow and then color grading. Here I'm using my Panasonic S1. Here I'm using After Effects and Blender. Okay. And then here I'm using DaVinci Resolve. So on first, on the recording itself, what are the formats that we are going to get? In my case, it's a MOV. It could be an MP4. In your camera, it can also vary. And generally, we are going to receive also a log format for our recordings. Okay. When we are in the softwares for the VFX and the 3D, usually what we want to be using is a linear image, okay, especially on Blender. Sometimes on After Effects, you can just use a regular Rec. 709 or sRGB. But for our purpose here, and for the purpose of you that is watching, that is probably to take things to the next level, or uh, yeah, combine different softwares all together, Embergen, uh, World Creator, Blender, and then DaVinci Resolve, the best way to approach is to use a linear image. And here we can, from Blender, we can especially receive a result in PNG that can be using our log, Okay, grading here. So it's like Blender is delivering us an image that was recorded from our camera. And if you want to learn more about it, I created a video on how to set up everything. So please go check that out. Or we can also just export in a regular EXR linear. Okay, and I like to export in this linear and to work inside this VFX in 3D and also linear because it gives me a lot of flexibility and also makes it easier for me to adjust the light both from my camera and also the light that I'm receiving from the software itself, okay? And then on the color grading, usually I want to receive this image in MOV also to retain, let's say, 4 to 2, um, 10 bit. That is what my camera can do, but so, yeah, some cameras do have 16 bit and also in the log format. So it's kind of like this never existed. And then I'm going straight from this log from my camera to the Vinci Resolve. Now let's look at how all of this comes together here using After Effects and Blender. First, if you haven't watched my video about color management, please go do that because you're going to learn how to make your footage coming from, in my case, Vlog, Panasonic Vlog into linear, but you can do that for Sony camera, Canon camera, it doesn't matter. Okay, first look in here on After Effects. Here is all my footage that came straight out of camera. The only thing that I did here is first, I came here, like I talk in my video, I choose OCO Color Manage Custom and I used my custom created OCIO configuration. Then I come on my footage that came from Panasonic and I come on color and I choose the color space, the one that I created, Panasonic S1 ISO 640. What that means is that I made my footage as linear. And you see here inside of the effects, it's really dark. That's because my display is not able to fully say, show a linear footage. So my display is not able to show it how it is in real life, let's say it like that. But I can use a display color space, like for example, the same here we have as the blender. Can be the same as looking through my camera. So if basically what I'm doing here is reversing back the linear that I added here on the footage by seeing with the same, uh, in the same way that my footage came into After Effects. So sh there should be no difference between seeing my footage in, let's say my regular player in the computer and what I'm seeing now here. Okay, but let's come back here to none. I can also choose something like sRGB, 
that's how my monitor would interpret this image in the sRGB format. For now, let's go to none, so you can also understand a bit better how this correlates to Blender. First, I will show you my final export of Blender. So this is the footage that was rendered from Blender. You see that the difference between them is just um, the cropping that I did with the camera on Blender, but the overall light in the scene is the same, okay? And then we come here, and then we go from this effect here where we get out of the building, and you see that this in linear is way brighter than my footage itself. So this is something that we could potentially also just fix on Blender. But in this case, this is an internal scene, so it makes sense that it's darker. And this is an outside scene with the sun coming in directly. So it also makes sense that this is brighter. Okay, now let's see like we are looking through my camera, through a vlog color space. And then you see everything still makes sense. Now, let's go to Blender and see how this translates on Blender. So you see here, none, we should see the same thing. Coming from, blend, coming from After Effects, both the footage that I just tracked here on Blender and added inside the building, but the scene itself. Let's also look at the shader editor and you see that my footage is coming in as linear because I exported from After Effects in EXR format and I exported as linear because we did the conversion here. So basically here and on, I didn't apply anything else, just exported directly, just the area that I wanted from the footage. Okay, so this footage below here. And that's what we pushed to Blender. And that's why also I just chose the color profile as linear. And you can just export like this. You come to Render Queue, Format, Open EXR, and you have the linear image. So basically we are seeing the same thing on Blender and After Effects. Now, a few things that we can do here on Blender. First, we can choose the same display as we had on After Effects to kind of see the scene through the lenses of my Panasonic S1. And there we go. The light of my footage and the light in the scene are not always the same. Like you saw on After Effects, when we do, let's go back to none because it's way easier to see like this. This is way brighter and my footage is way darker. If I wanted to compensate, how do I do that? To do that, I'll have to make the scene itself darker or using a add-on like photographer that changes the exposure here. Basically, here's just, just a fancy way to see in the same uh, numbers that you see using your camera. Um, how to change the exposure, but you just have one slider here in Blender that would do basically the same thing. I could do it like that. The problem of doing like this is that this is not baked in directly when we export EXR. And also when we export as PNG, we need to add an extra node in our compositing. So sometimes the safest option is to just maintain zero because we know that this is going to come baked in on EXR and PNG, everything. So we don't have to mess with that anymore, but then we need to adjust the light inside the scene to be closer to what we want. But for my example, I did use the photographer add-on with my exposure around this 2.76. I exported in EXR without the exposure baked in. I just added the exposure here on After Effects by using a exposure node, which is basically doing the same thing. So you don't have to worry too much and I have more control in After Effects, but I also show how you can do differently. But let's think about the light itself. So here we look at our footage and it's really, really dark and the outside landscape is really, really bright. So ideally, how do you match those to be closer together? You just come here. Um, here you would have your own light. I'm using the um, Pure Sky Pro add-on. And then I can just come here to the brightness and push it down closer to what I have in my footage, 0 0.2. So if we come to my footage, it basically remains the same. And the outside now is also darker. So that's really nice. Basically, that's one way of matching them together. So if I export them, then you have more or less the same levels. 
Another thing that can be done also, especially if you don't want to change the photographer add-on part, okay, because here you see that we basically have zero exposure here. So when I click apply composition, we are baking in the exposure using this node here. So baking in the image to the composite. If I want to bake into the XR, I can put here, but like I showed you, I didn't do that because I prefer to do that on After Effects. But what happens here is that when I push the exposure back to zero, okay, we see that our footage goes really, really dark and the outside also really, really dark. So to compensate that, we can come here again on the sky itself and just put the day brightness back to what we had before, so 0 0.5. And then my footage to compensate for that, the way you would do is basically use the emission strength here. So here's my footage, the video comes to base color and also emission. And then I'll push my emission strength to something like 2.1 which is basically the same that I had here in my exposure. So this way I'm using the exposure zero, meaning that it's going to come in baked in directly on the EXR. And then I don't have to deal with that in the later stage. One thing that is important also to notice when I'm exporting the composite itself, I usually like to do the export in PNG format because when I export this PNG, which is basically what we have here, the composite part, okay, and here we are baking in the exposure. Let me show you again the exposure. Of course, because I adapted the exposure to zero, to zero exposure here, when I change out this, this is off. So I have to also adapt here or just not have the exposure at all because this is the light that I want now. Basically, when I do it like that and I export in PNG, I will have the PNG with the proper exposure by baking in. And also it will come in the display device that I choose here. So right now is at none, so linear, but if I put this Panasonic S1, then I'll get the image like this from my PNG, meaning that it's basically like treating my PNG image as it came straight out of my camera. So the display device gets baked in into the PNG, while in the EXR we will also get in linear, independently of what we have here. So you have a few things to choose. Basically, if you want less work, just go with the PNG, the composite, um, and that's why I like to have both, so I can just decide later when I'm doing the composite part, but we have here the EXR linear without the exposure baked in, so I have to adjust, and here, we have the composite PNG with the exposure baked in because on Photographer I done, I clicked to either apply the composition here. Right now it's at zero, of course, because I adapted for you to understand. But here you see, uh, basically here exposure, we will have a node like this here. So it can be just like exposure, something like this. And you plug in here, plug in there, and you put the same number that you have there on the exposure that you adjusted in your scene. So important notes for you to take here when you have your footage and your landscape is that you do need to look at the overall difference between the light in your footage, so the emission that you have in your footage, and also the light that you get on the landscape, landscape itself. Because if we, let's say we have a really powerful day brightness here, 1.5, you really blown out and this is going to be easier by seeing in a sRGB color space. So I'm going to adjust really quickly. We have something, let's push it even further, like 10, super blown out here. Then we come to our footage and it's basically super dark. Of course, these are two separate uh, places, let's say, but sometimes you are creating the scene alongside your footage and then you have your scene super bright, bright and your footage super dark. So that's basically how you adjust. You adjust the overall brightness in the scene plus the emission in your footage. And then you have a more proper balanced image. Then after that, you export your EXR. And here you see I have my EXR and also my PNG. I'm using here the EXR, isn't linear. And then I push it here, 
linear. And then you see here that on my display, I put S1 just to see properly. And everything is nice here. Then I come here to my main comp where I have the final composition. Everything in vlog, seeing everything in vlog. And there we go. And then I put none here because I'm going to do the conversion on After Effects itself because I want to export like it just came out of my camera. So basically I'm here with adjustment layer coming from linear and push into my vlog so I can then go to DaVinci Resolve and do the color grading. Then you see my final image.